So you mentioned before that uh, you got introduced to this world by Juan Atkins, the Electrify Mojo. But when uh, when you when when you start working as a graphic artist and painter for the for such an important label uh, like uh, Planet E, right? Transmat. Uh, uh, can you tell us a bit uh, like the labels that you work for? Uh, which were your uh, biggest satisfactions? Like working with, uh, with your, the, the paintings or the cover that you prefer. Oh. Uh, I have one here by the Derek Carver, uh, really oh, beautiful. Cool, yeah. cool. <laughs> yes, that's one of my favorites. Um, yes, I started with Transmat and um, did work for Metroplex, uh, did work for KMS Records, and uh, Planet E, uh, uh, all the major labels in Detroit pretty much I did work for Underground Resistance, Red Planet and um, shoot, uh, Direct Beat and uh, uh, and many labels in Europe and some in Japan and uh, some of my favorites, uh, the work I did for UR is always special to me and some of my latest work, uh, like you mentioned Derek Carr, I really enjoy that one, that's sort of like the Model 500 robot and um, uh, Galaxy to Galaxy is one of my favorites, of course. And the Muse of Silence, which uh, just got uh, to a uh, record cover in Amsterdam. And uh, those are some of my favorites. Uh, uh, have some scattered throughout the 30 years that I've been working. So when this collaboration with the Drexia started? Uh, originally for Neptune's Lair in 1999. Yeah. So it was 20 years ago. And uh, so that, that's like your favorite album, just because you uh, oh, work well, for yeah, it? Yeah, or yeah, yeah well, sure. It's one of my favorite Drexia albums for sure. But you know, I also like The Quest. Okay. And uh, any, any like favorite track? Like there is one special oh, that you're really Oh, well, I like a, a whole bunch, man. I love Hydro Cubes. I love Red Hills, La Dosa. Sea Snake? Uh, sea, sea Snake is excellent, and of course Amazing Bubble base. Metropolis. Okay. And uh, I mean, it's just so many. It's just, it's, it's yeah, really it's a lot. Countless. <laughs> For sure. And so, which is the inspiration uh, that the music give you uh, to create this kind of artworks? Um, yeah, it's, it's always been inspirational. Um, ever since I started, I always listened to the music to get visualizations in my mind, and that continues today. Uh, we this never... is very important because, like, uh, when I read like an interview of Derek May, when uh, well, for the foundation of techno, it was fundamental to make music and have an imagery of this, you know, mm, yes. because it, it was uh, impossible to disconnect both the, the both aspects, you know. Yes, yes, uh, it's no, impossible. Uh, there's no music without uh, the imaginary yes. that you can have, you know, of yes. future technology and all this kind of stuff, right? Yeah, see, see, and I... that's also what inspires you why you are doing the live painting that you will do tonight, yes, as well, right? Exactly, exactly. It's the like music. A free flow of, uh, yeah, it's like a zone you get in uh, when you're doing, especially the live painting. Um, it's very focused and, um, you know, it's, it's really wonderful that you feel uh, a conduit with the music, a circuit of the music, and you can express it visually. So that's um, one of the things that uh, still brings me joy to work on these different projects, doing when it's a wonderful musical song and then I can translate that visually into nice artwork. Okay, can you give us also an anticipation of what is the really sto real story of the Book of the Drexia about? And uh, tell us about a bit of the characters, the main players. Uh, uh, we had some fun last night talking about Dr. Blofin. Uh, you are a bit dressed like him. <laughs> and, uh, yes, it's like see, your see. Uh, avatar, your alter ego. You yeah, know, a little the, bit, a little and, bit. Um, yeah, just a little bit of anticipation before the people start reading the book. Well, cool, yeah. Which is just the first episode. Uh, hopefully there's going to be more, right? Oh, for sure, for sure. Well, it's just sort of an introduction to Drexia. Um, I started with the starting point of the, babe, uh, the the woman being thrown in the water, which is what the, um, the, the liner notes talked about. And so I started that as starting point and what would happen from, from that point onward. So... We have an origin story of how they survived underwater and sort of mutated to become stronger. And uh, we have several uh, first generation stories, I call them, and one modern day story of Drexia. And 
And so it just tells several early stories about the history of, of Drexia from the children and then a little bit uh, later with the wave jumpers and what happened to them, how there were only two remaining in existence. And also I uh, wanted to show a musical aspect of Drexia so we also have a story about how they uh, danced. And um, the modern day story is Bubble Metropolis and that is uh, with the character X205, uh, just like the song says, we pretty much stuck with the song and visualized that. And we have the first king who was one of the most powerful Drexians. We have the, the, the how they were rescued somewhat, which I'll leave as a surprise for those who read it. And, um, you know, there's... Uh, it was interesting also what you were telling me last, last night about like this gender parity, right? 